Hello, my name is Barry. I'd like to welcome you to Christianity Explained Podcast, where my goal is to share biblical principles and ideas to help you in your daily walk. <laughs> oh boy, I got a very interesting topic I think you'll enjoy, and message of hearing is exactly what it is. How do I start this? Well, I am, first, I am well aware of all the stuff that's happening in the news and the and the hurt and the pain that's being felt in a lot of different communities. And because this is an audio podcast, you have no way of knowing of who the heck is doing the talking. Well, I just gave you my name, but what's not seen is this. I was born in 1964. Uh, and I was born with serious disabilities. I'm visually impaired, in fact, I'm very nearsighted, and have severe hearing loss. In those days, the world was very different. Uh, there wasn't much hope given all that. And I certainly did suffer a lot of hardship and pain. And you might be asking, uh, okay, how did this relate to all the crap that's going on, like Buffalo and all this other stuff. Wait, and you will find out. Because one of the problem the problem we're sharing is this. If it comes from some guy who obviously sounds like a white Italian, it's going to sound disingenuous. That's why I felt it important to say, hey, I am a minority, okay? Even though you don't, may not even think about it, we, we've been a, the disabled community has been a minority for thousands of years. We've gone through plenty of garbage from uh, people ridiculing, mocking, some saying, hey, oh, the God must be punishing him for some, some sin, uh, especially if it from the mother's womb. And I'm referring to John 9. So oh, that's a beauty. Okay. And I and I suffer too uh, on a personal level. So, yeah, I'm aware. But here's the thing. Back in, at the time I was growing up, uh, yeah, I could see there wasn't much hope given. And I had no idea of the impact that the... Uh, Children Education Reformation Act. I think that's the correct name. It was passed in 1975. <laughs> it opened the door for more children to be min- with disabilities to be mainstreamed in the public school. It opened the door because it says children with physical disabilities are capable of participating in the public school environment. And Yes, some adjustments need to be made, duh, <laughs> but uh, it is doable and challenging, <laughs> and I'm thankful. But guess what? I would have totally missed that if, and I actually did miss it because I didn't see much hope, of course. Uh, yes, you could say, well, you were kind of young still. So, I, hey, I got a lot older, and I still didn't see much because I was too painfully conscious of all the pain and the hurt that was suffered from uh, and humiliation. I didn't even think about the changes that already was underway for Stan Lee and crew to come up with characters like Alicia Masters and uh, Matt Murdock, of all people. If if you didn't watch the latest Spider-Man movie, you're not going to know who I'm talking about. The guy was more of a hero because he was a good lawyer than uh, who he was in Secret Identity, Daredevil. Heck, I didn't even know about Dr. Midnight. Heck, that was was recent. If you don't know, the guy actually was blind. (laughs) And yet he had this ability, a normal ability to see at night. Just daylight, he couldn't see. Oh, but see, you get the idea? People, there were changes were already underway. Uh, 
and nobody saw what the computer was going to do and how we would open doors and and dramatically bring about change. And I can thank my parents' generation for laying down the groundwork uh, that opened the door because it was the silent generation that marched uh, with Dr. King uh, for the Civil Rights Act. It was the silent generation that brought in rock and roll, baby! <laughs> yes. <laughs> Don't let them fool you. They did. And saw the uh, development of a sp- of the internet, all that fun stuff. Yes. Hmm. I guess somebody forgot to tell them that they were supposed to be silent. Thanks for not being silent. <laughs> uh, but see, that's the thing. Right now, you're listening to a guy who's energetic, happy. I'm I'm really what's called a realist, uh, an optimist, a, a hope-filled realist who doesn't see things negatively or act go around saying, oh, I'm pessimistic. No, that's not me. That was the old me from years ago. I had trouble seeing. My dad was actually worse than me. <laughs> it wasn't until I moved out to Phoenix, Arizona, that I slowly underwent healing. And I'm thankful for uh, some of the people I met especially through Able, Arizona Bridge to Independent Living, where I learned uh, some, of the, some of the changes. Hmm. And it would be years later, I do some research, and I mentioned it in the blog post, of more changes that went on. You see, I would, because of the, the negative mindset, the victim mindset, and yes, I did have a victim mentality, only... I, and I'm going to, I'll share the difference with and that in just a second. But I had to learn and deal with my issue as I slowly began to deal with it. And I had encountered with someone like Susan Webb from Able who straightened my butt out. And I'm thankful she did. <laughs> I slowly came to realize that, hey, maybe things were changing. Maybe things weren't as bad as I originally thought. That's where I started learning. And I'll thank God for bringing people into my life to help. Now, I said I had a victim mentality, but mine took in the form of survival. Like, okay, the world is harsh. I need to survive. I better take charge. I got to put my foot down or put it up somebody's wheel. <laughs> that was me. <laughs> That's one type of response uh, that you could have as the, with the victim mindset. Like, okay, I'm a victim of unjust society. I better either go, whoa, with me, whoa, I can't do anything. Or I could take the opposite side. Which I did. <laughs> oh. And I can tell you from experience, it didn't yield. And if I know Susan, she would tell you uh, straight out, neither did the world with me. <laughs> she wasn't going to put up with me if I play, felt sorry for myself. And if she had got a whip of my mouth at time, she would have straightened my butt out. Thank you, Father, for such directors. And I don't care if she was agnostic. (laughs) God can use good people who are the right heart and mind. And yet, I even had problems from uh, the religious crowd out there who really were a problem. Did you notice I said religious crowd? I didn't say conservative or liberal. Because the religious crowd is very different. (laughs) They may say they're conservative, but uh, I know a lot of very good-hearted conservatives that would have freaked them out and said, ah! And I know a lot of good-hearted liberals who would have also freaked them out. (laughs) Yeah. And I'll tell you, and I can assure you, 
that that is how I started learning. And as soon as I started seeing the changes that were happening and accepting that I didn't have to uh, put my foot down or do any of that, yes. So how did that relate to uh, the issue, the, the racial issue? Well, I got news for you. It's the same thing. I don't know if you ever heard the phrase, uh, it goes in one of two ways. Either hmm, there's nothing new under the sun, but people uh, forget. They see something new and they forget that it's really old. <laughs> that, that was a very entertaining way for King Solomon. And I definitely like the way that some of the younger crowds had come up with. And that is, the more things change, the more they remain the same. Oh, so right. Human nature doesn't change, no matter the circumstance. Here's the thing I was hoping you learn either from the blog post or here. Change is not going to happen if we uh, uh, burn the village down and attack. Okay? It's time to not it's time to not release the Kraken, which I've certainly hear plenty of people doing. They're asking for the cat, the Kraken to be released. And if you don't know, crack, the Kraken is from Greek mythology. It's a monster. Uh, it's a dragon-like monster that attacked a village, uh, an island village, and and it was filled. It was epitome of rage and anger. And that kind of was the idea. And I, that's why I had to learn. Instead of releasing the Kraken, I had to release forgiveness instead. And that's important. Yeah, I could go on and play the victim game. I could go on and try to make... But nothing positive will happen as a result. No one's really helped by it. If anything, they're made miserable with it. And I have been on the receiving end of people who try to make me feel guilty for saying I couldn't possibly have done. Hey, I got it for, I got blamed uh, because of my disability. I somehow was, it was somehow blamed on a sin that I somehow, somehow, I don't know how, but done in my mother's womb. Really? <laughs> That's a feat. <laughs> you got that that from the idiot brigade. Others just say other insane nonsense. Now it is true people have persecuted one group or another, and they've been doing that for centuries. But guess what? It's not changed if we keep blaming and attacking. Do you know who actually win? It's the devil. He's the only one that wins with us beating the crap out of each other and blowing each other and releasing the Kraken. He loves it when we do that. <laughs> he loves to see the divide and conquer and brothers and sisters who should be putting their foot down and telling the devil to shut the up and put a cork in it. Hang off. Release the bl blood of Jesus instead on this. Let that be released instead of the anger and the rage. If you're going to put the anger, release it on the devil, not other human beings. Even if we do want to put a foot up their rear, and there have been people I wanted to put my foot up their rear, okay? But it doesn't help. It doesn't bring about the righteousness of God. It doesn't bring about repentance. It doesn't bring any of that. And yes, there were unfortunate, tragic mistakes made uh, all around. <laughs> Sorry, but I am not a card-carrying member of the Republican Party. I am aware that they haven't acted very bright and all that bright either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And I am aware of a lot of junk. But we in the church have the power to really bring about healing. But we have to learn how. Well, the smarter thing to do, uh, and I'll use, uh, the, this is the reason I'm using people with disability uh, thing because it's a lot easier 
my hope is that it'll be a lot easier for you to hear than if I point a finger at other things. Mm -hmm. The easiest thing to do is to ask, how can we bring about healing? How can we uh, bring about real healing that promotes that? You know, in case you're wondering, I'm practically quoting Second uh, Samuel, you know, the part where the Gibeonite uh, came, where there was a, fab, a famine in the land for three years. David went to the Lord and asked, what, what's going on? And was told to talk to the Gibeonites. And he asked them that very question. How can we make this right? He didn't say, well, that happened in the past. No. He said, how can we make this right? How can we promote healing and, re and reconciliation? All right? That's what he did. That's scripture right there. And it wasn't the blame, Helen. And by the way, that's the other thing. I don't know if anyone even bothered to notice, but the Gibeonites didn't go around saying, well, we want to attack the whole, all of Israel for the action of this one guy who acted like a real jerk. <laughs> no, they just said, hey, it's just these guys, this one uh, couple of people from that family that we wanted to deal with, all right? That was it. No, no reparation of money and silver. They didn't even ask for that. You might want to look. Ask, how do we promote healing? How do we do that? Let's do something positive and constructive. And let's turn off some of the garbage uh, rhetoric that I sometimes hear uh, some people inflaming. Hmm. Ah. Yes, things have gotten a lot better than we may realize. And there is hope reason. But we have to bring, put our eyes on what Jesus is saying and ask him, Lord, how can we bring about real healing and lower the defense mechanism a bit to, so that we can actually hear? And also, let's lower the temperature of the rhetoric and stop releasing the, the cracking. Really? Let's start releasing the blood of Jesus on the situation. Let's start releasing forgiveness whether it's deserved or not. Let's release grace, mercy. Even yet the grace and mercy and forgiveness have been released on us, even though we don't deserve it. And I'm talking about what God did for us through his son Jesus. He, because of Jesus, God was able to release grace, mercy, compassion, all that on us. Even though our sins required that we get our ass toast, toasty in hell. But no, he instead, because of Jesus, there is forgiveness. And that's the same practice that I had to learn too. Yes, people are going to make mistakes. Yes, people are going to put their foot in their mouth, no matter what. But guess what? I had to learn to do to others what God was doing for me. I had to learn to walk in forgiveness, walk in mercy, and grace, and extend grace, rather than uh, take the mil the attack uh, dog approach. You know, the militant who uh, wants to go in gun blazing. <laughs> yeah. I want, I, I'm trying to encourage healing and share some of the ways that I was healed in my own heart. And I have to tell you, because God healed my heart, because he did such a wonderful work in helping me to forgive, guess what? I can look at what's happening and see the progress that's being made. Because of the healed heart, I can look and say, wow, I didn't know that there was this character from in the 1940 that was blind. Wow, was that the first one? I wouldn't have known that or thought that uh, back in my angry state. No, I wouldn't have found out about that. I wouldn't have given serious thought to the character of the devil and really think, if not for the healing that God put in my heart and that. All because of what the Lord did. He brought that healing. And I want to invite you to ask the Lord into your heart 
to help you with the healing, help you to give you the strength to forgive. Even though you really want to uh, strangle them or ram their head through a wall or whatever it is that's going on. Oh, come on. Don't uh, sit there and act like, uh, I don't know. I do. <laughs> oh, God. Part of the fun part about advocacy is that I have to learn to advocate for others and to help them uh, with their own issues, too. <laughs> oh, man. Susan, you would be shocked to see what I'm doing these days. <laughs> Never would have thought of it. Neither would I. But thank you. But I want to thank you for taking the time to listen. And if you can, I invite you to read the blog post. Uh, I didn't go exactly as per the uh, post, but a lot of it's very similar. <laughs> All right. Thank you for your time. Hope you have a blessed day. See you when I see you.